Good morning and hello. I'm sure that most of the people here in this auditorium would have heard something about what nasty, nasty things human beings are doing to the environment around us, to our planet Earth. Now, we've heard a lot about this in news, media, etc. But today we'll be taking a look at something I like to call easy greening. What we can do to make our daily lives greener. Okay? So I'd like you to keep this phrase in mind, e easy greening, for the next 10 to 12 minutes. Is that okay? Yes, okay. Um, these are some of the phrases we've been hearing about uh, more and more often over the past two or three decades. Pollution, environmental destruction, erosion of soil, erosion of our resources, and the big baddie extinction. And I'm sure that at some point or the other, we've all complained about or commented about what a big nuisance plastic waste is and how the government authorities or some authorities have to take some kind of step um, to clean it up, to recycle it or to make sure it's safely disposed of. And I'm sure that we've, you know, seen these things, heard about these things, heard discussions on the news, on news channels, read articles about this, seen programs about this, learned about movements such as, you know, uh, Narmada Bachao Andolan, we've heard about Hugger Tree, we've heard about different things, Greenpeace, we've heard about so many organizations. But I think for the vast majority, myself included, hearing about or reading about has been the extent of our involvement in such activities. It seems as though it's a very complicated process, doesn't it? environmental conservation, something to be left to the experts, something to be left to people who know how to do it, who form a team to do it. Um, and let's be honest here, I mean, we hardly have enough time to make sure that our work is done, to make sure that, you know, our curriculum is finished, we're doing well on exams. It doesn't seem like it's worth the effort um, to try and save the environment, right? So, what I'd like to propose today is Let's think about the environment. Let's think about how we as a group, how we as a society can take very small, painless, you know, nothing like chopping off a limb. Um, my lovely audience here, as you can see by the smiley face, I want you all to participate uh, in this discussion or in the aftermath of this discussion to think up ideas on how we as individuals can participate in the greening of the earth, in the re-greening of the earth rather. So one small step for us, one giant leap for environmental conservation. This is not very difficult, it's not too complicated, this is just you and me, this is people like us all over the world participating in something that is important, essential and to tell you the truth, the earth needs saving. We are going to take, you have to humor me here, okay. We are going to take uh, one day in each of your lives. So for 10 to 15 seconds, just a quick run through, quick fast forward through your normal day. Wake up, some people morning, some people afternoon. I personally wake up in the evening at times. Um, brush your teeth, wash your face. Then, you know, things like that. Can you just run through it in your head? Humor me, okay? And now let's see if the for, uh, we're going to look through a few suggestions. Let's see if any of these are practicable in our lives. If any of these are things we can do, each of us can do personally, without too much effort, without too much pain, without you know um, any kind of uh, monetary or physical or psychological effort. The first thing that we usually do is brush our teeth, right? Wake up. Now, I know there are a few people, okay? I used to be one of them, and you know who you are. Now, we brush our teeth. So, put paste on our brush, brush our teeth, think about today or yesterday or how we did not sleep or did sleep. And we do all this to the background music of water flowing down the drain. So, we leave the tap open while we're brushing our teeth. Um, if you're one of them or if you know somebody who's like that, 
ask him to take the mug measure test. Put a mug under the tap and see how much water is going down the drain while we are contemplating our day, our lives, or the universe at large. Now, if you think that one or two mugs of water is a significant amount of you know, water to waste on a daily basis, then you're right. Because this can lead, when you look at individuals collectively as a community who do this, this can lead to thousands of liters of water wasted every single year. So if you think that is worth it, if you think that it's not too much effort, close it up when you brush, when you wash, when you soap your hands. And while we're on the topic of taps, when we wash vessels, if any of you have the good habit of doing that or the bad habit of doing that, uh, when you wash vessels, we usually open the tap full throttle, right? Just like in the case of engines, best performance with, you know, the medium optimum level of tap opening. So make sure that you're not wasting water while you're doing something with it as well. And if you're in a building that is your own, or if you're in a building that's not yours, I don't know what you're doing there, but since you're there anyway, if you see a leaky tap, what you can do is, you don't know a plumber, plumbers are hard to get nowadays. You can just push a bucket or a vessel under it, somebody will come along, see a full bucket or vessel of water and use it. So instead of just letting water leak, you can actually collect it and use it for something. And if the next step, we're going to school, we're going to college or work, then we can carpool, it's something that's really cool. Um, we can have fun, you chase off the Monday blues while we're going somewhere or coming somewhere. We can save fuel, we can save money, and we can save uh, on the emissions that our cars make, which will in turn help save the earth just a little bit at a time. And if we're at the traffic lights, which are getting longer and longer, if you're going to be there for more than 10 seconds, it's actually cheaper and more, it's better and more uh, efficient for your engine to be switched off and switched back on again, studies show, than actually letting it idle for 10 seconds or more. So next time you're at a traffic light, switch off. And when you're filling up fuel, petrol, diesel, whatever, make sure that your tire pressure is checked um, because if you, your tire pressure is at the correct level, then you're going to save on money because you're going to uh, reduce the wear and tear. You're going to increase mileage and, of course, you're going to save the earth again. Now, oh, wait, if you're going to, if you're still one of those old-fashioned people who writes and if you use dot pens, you know, the, not the fountain pens, if you use those, if you feel like it, buy refills instead of buying a whole new pen because the amount of plastic that you throw away each time you throw in a completed pen is much more when compared to that when you throw away one single refill, okay? And if you have laptops, if you work on laptops, if you work on PCs, if you work on any sort of electronic device, let it go to sleep when you're not using it. You'll save on electricity, you'll save on energy, and you will, of course, save on your battery life. And my pet peeve. Uh, you see those little bottles of water that are on your table everywhere? You see them in, at weddings, at different types of functions. The issue is some people don't need the whole bottle of water. They drink a little bit. And they leave it and go off. Obviously, this can't be reused at most times because somebody else drank it. Oh my, come on, would you? It's not sanitary. So, they throw it off. That's both water and the plastic bottle wasted. So, if you don't feel like drinking the whole bottle, take it home with you. Maybe you have a little nephew, niece, child, somebody who can, who's the right size for it. Um, maybe you can just go home and drink it when you're thirsty. At the very least, what you can do is Pour it under a plant, crush the bottle, and leave it. Or reuse the bottle once or twice. I don't know if that's advisable, but you can do it. Next, on to a few general things. We can pay bills online, save on the amount of paper taken to print the bills. We can print on both sides of paper, which saves a lot of trees, as we all know. We can also, this one's a classic for a reason, reduce reuse and recycle. Those of whom uh, have seen Captain Planet, the cartoon, long back, you would know this one. Because when you're recycling, for example, paper, it takes only 30% of the energy it would take to make new paper to recycle and reuse that paper. So a huge chunk of savings, both in terms of money as well as in terms of the environment. Now, where does our waste go? One major thing in our cities is that we can see waste on the road. If we can make sure personally that our waste doesn't go out on the road, that will save a lot in terms of the number of people who have to work, the amount of machinery that's needed to clean up, 
and of course money power resources and if there's vegetable waste you see you don't have to go to the trouble of composting it all you have to do is throw it under some tree it will decay by itself no effort extra um, uh, fertilizer for that plant or tree now finally if you're at an atm you're drawing money and the atm asks you very politely do you need a printed receipt say just as politely back no thank you they're happy with the screen and then save on the little bits of paper also instead of using tissues try and use cloths old fashioned cloth because then you can see uh, cut down on the number of trees being cut down and refill packs are good for a reason they're cheaper and you don't have to buy so many bottles of oil or soap or hand wash etc and finally when you say good night if you are we are the kind of people who can afford to have the ac on there's something called a timer which is which is a very nice thing 3 or 4 hours of ac would set us pretty much down for the night and it will switch off save again on energy on emissions and save the environment and now the big question just imagine you're at a party or something you go up to a person you're just meeting them chit chat small talk you know and you you go you go and tell them so have you thought about how to make your life greener have you thought about you know have you googled ways to easily green your life i'm pretty sure that that person is going to give you a very weird look say hmm huh, huh, okay thank you and just walk away from the crazy person right so it might seem a little over the top to think about all this all the time to do all this all the time um you know to try and green ourselves to try and reduce the impact of our life our individual lives on the environment why should you do it because some things are still not available from factories or in shops such as um uh, thank god oxygen is available in uh, bottles now but thank god it's still free for us such as breathable air such as you know potable water drinkable water edible food which is safe to eat free from chemicals so if you need such things you're still going to have unfortunately to depend on the earth because that's the only planet that we still have so if you want to keep your earth alive if you want to keep the rest of us alive if you want to keep the numerous species of wonderful life on earth alive then these tiny small painless quick everyday steps can actually make a huge impact on the environment on our planet and in turn circling full back on us because it will improve the quality of the life of every single creature on earth thank you